All right, take two. We're ready. We're fired up. I hit the start button. I'm excited about that. Um, so I'm excited today uh, to have a guest on the call. And, and Nate, I want to, Nathan, you know, I don't call you Nate. I don't know why. I just did for the first time ever. But uh, Marco, I call you Marco more than Nate, Nathan, Marco. And uh, really, I just want to say thanks for being on the call, man. I know you got a million things going on in your world. You're being pulled left and being pulled right. And like just the fact that you were able to take the time, I really appreciate it. And um, I do want to kind of have you tell just a little bit about your background, but I just want to tell for the people that are listening to this call, you know, there's a huge reason I have Nathan Marco on this call. One is the guy is as passionate as the day is long. This guy is fired up out of his mind about life, about helping people, about being successful and about your success, right? Like no bull crap, be successful. That's kind of like the motto I get from this guy. And so when I say that, like, like get your pens, get your paper, because he's got a lot to talk about, but he's been highly successful. He has multiple different businesses, multiple income streams. Like he's not a one trick pony. Got people that appreciate his time, follow him around, take notes. Like the guy's got some stuff going on. So I say all that to say, uh, you know, hey, listen up. But I also say that all to say like, hey, I'm going to be taking notes too, Nathan. So like I'm fired up about what we're talking about. And uh, if you could, man, could you tell people, you know, like kind of just, a little bit of your background and kind of like where you came from to where you are now, however, however much you want to go into that, that'd be awesome. Sure, sure. Well, thank you for the introduction. That was that was far superseded probably the reality. I don't know. I'm trying to remain humble in that area. So I, I do appreciate that. But um, yeah, as far as like my background goes, um, without getting like major deep, because I made a lot of twists and turns, especially when you're when you find entrepreneurism, which is kind of like what we do in insurance, you know, you're, you're your own boss, you kind of run your own show, you're responsible for you. Um, and when all that comes on, yeah, it came on me at an earlier age. So without getting like major, major in deep and depth and having a four hour show here, um, I found that early. So I struggled with getting that together, but I uh, knew I wanted the freedom, right? So I think that's what draws a lot of us into this is a couple things like wealth and freedom, you know, be able to make be your own boss, tell yourself what's going on. You want a vacation, you can take the days you choose. You know, you're sick. You don't have to come to work that day if you're too sick. You know, you're a grown person. You don't have to ask another adult to do that. You're not a child anymore. So growing up, uh, yearning for that. My father was an entrepreneur uh, in real estate. And I've seen him come and go as he pleased. He made a lot of money in real estate. Very successful man. And real estate wasn't my game, but I wanted the the presence of what he was able to do. I liked the attributes of being self-employed. So background was I uh, jumped on eBay as a young kid, um, pretty much had my own version of an eBay store before those were out, did that for a while, did a lot of buying and selling, uh, got into timeshares, set a couple records in timeshares. Once and always, I didn't jump right in and do it. You know, I learned, you know, it was, was um, I think my mind sold me that I was better than I was and, and uh, you know, did that for a while, but that taught me a lot. You know, it, throws you right into selling and, and, and learning what it's like to, to have one opportunity a day. And when they tell you, no, you made $0 that day. So to wake up again tomorrow and do that, it, it takes, it builds that perseverance muscle. You know, you've got to do it or you fail. You got two options, you know, so either I'm going to get through this and, and make a better life. Cause I know it's there to see everybody else doing it. So um, I can't be the one anomaly that just, that can't do it. You know, I don't think that I'm that, um, unintelligent. So uh, just building that muscle up. Uh, I bought and sold a lot, even on the side, like through before Marketplace, but including Marketplace, uh, Craigslist, stunks along those lines. Um, I was you've been, wheeling, <laughs> you've been wheeling and dealing quite some time is what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, I did. I did boats. I did trucks, cars. I did motorcycles for a while. I did quite a bit and not for a business, literally did it for myself, just trying to find a structured uh, organization like business that I could like take it hold of. And see, the thing is, is that in this, Paul, in insurance particular, what people maybe don't fully realize is when you become an entrepreneur outside of insurance, there's a lot of work to be done. There's, there's a lot, a lot of structure, a lot of software work, a lot of in, in build, the building that has to be done. And what legacy offers insurance in its in itself but legacy more so is it gives you like the entire structure and it says all you got to do is just be the performance guy that's it i'm giving you everything else all the hard stuff that makes entrepreneurs fail we're going to provide that's what insurance is so amazing that's why it drew me into it not just the money it was it was the ease you guys did all the hard work so for me all i gotta do is come in and sell and train people that's all i gotta do 
I mean, that's like a no brainer. That's like Walmart saying, Hey, look, just come in and collect the money at the end of the day. We're going to provide the products. We're going to provide the building. We're going to, we're going to have the structure. We're going to provide all the, 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 you know, the, the organization on how you get bonuses and stuff. All you got to do is just be there. Like, I don't even know how you could let that collapse. Like that's the easiest thing in the world to do. So just, just getting your, your wrapping your brain around that, you know, is, is huge. So anyways, uh, for a brief stint, I don't know if it's worth mentioning. I actually was a physicist for a company called Bartlett Energy. Um, I was a health physicist and I worked in nuclear facilities for like two years. The reason I mentioned that is just to say this. Uh, I don't care how much you pay me. I'm not a nine to five guy. I mean, they paid me really well. And I'm not a nine to five guy. I don't care how much you pay me. I need to be around people and I need to be out where I can control my income. Because no matter how much they pay me, Paul, it's never enough. I, I'm always going to want more. I feel like there's no taming Marco. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you like you don't know. Like, no way. You can't tame a lion, man. Like, come on. <laughs> you know? And so uh, that's crazy. So a physicist, that's cool. I would not have put, I would have not put that on you. So, so physicists and, but you've always been doing these entrepreneurial things, right? So All let me, ask, life. let All me life. ask you this, man. As far as like, can you tell me about uh, like personal brand, like branding? Like, cause I know there's a point in your life where that probably didn't mean a dang thing to you. Mm -hmm. And like, I know that it matters to you now. So can oh you kind of yeah. talk a little bit about that, you know, just from, you know, however your perspective is on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Branding is, is, I mean, you're talking, you're talking, if I want to put it in one word, the number one killer of whatever you do, whatever line of work or business you're in is obscurity. If you are not known, I cannot purchase from you. If I'm in a room and I say, who knows me? And the guys that don't raise their hand, I guarantee I've never bought a product from me. And they haven't bought a product because they don't know me. You have to be known to buy a product. Far too many times, look at this. Think of social media as far as like, um, God, branding is so important, Paul. I can't even, I can't even tell you enough. Uh, it truly is. Um, okay, for Instagram. I just did research on Instagram. 300 million plus accounts on Instagram are private. How on God's green earth can I purchase from you or know what you do for a living to purchase from you or work for you or anything when your account's private? 300 plus million accounts are private. I don't even know, unless you're being sought after by the CIA, there's no reason to have a private account. You know, unless you're like, you know, smuggling drugs across the border, there's no reason. Obscurity will be your number one killer. If they don't know you, they can't work for you. They can't buy from you. And I mean, I remember, think about this. I bet there's times in each one of our lives where we bought a car and forgot about our one buddy that works at the car dealership because he never posts. He never lets me know all that. He's got to remind me every day it's what he does. Even though if it's a little annoying at times, when it comes time for me to buy, I know you're the guy I'm going to. But if you forget, if you treat like your social media, like it's just your personal thing and you're always just putting your Xbox on there and what you're eating, I have no idea what you do. <clears throat> so when it comes up to buy a car, you lost a sale just by not letting me know all the time. Or when you go to buy a house, you forget that one friend of yours is a realtor. You don't post enough. I don't know. I forgot. So branding is important. And more than just that, um, branding is important for multiple things. You, you want your last name or your name or whatever your, your agency is going to be, what you do is is in, it's like to not have branding and not be on social media platforms Paul is the equivalency to me saying hey look I'm going to give you 200 billboards in town and you can put your business on all of them and you're saying you know I like to keep my social media private what I'm going to do Nate is I'm going to I'm going to hide all 199 of them in the woods and only tell a few people where they're at and only just going to post on one just going to put my brand on one like what you're sabotaging yourself Obscurity will be your number one killer, not knowing who you are. You know, you want people to think not only of you as a professional in the field, you want to be an authority figure. And how you separate from that is by being the brand that they know. People purchase, it's like 86% buy off of recognition. Even if it's not as good, they will buy by recognition. If I want a sales course, I think Grant Cardone. The guy is by far not the best sales guy out there, but he's what I know. He's the first who guy hasn't, who hasn't heard of him. Like, Absolutely. Who, like, if you're if you're even thinking about sales, you've you've heard of him because you know you the, the internet knows you've thought about sales and the internet yes. put him on your phone. Yes. You know, right? You're right. Yes. Whether you clicked on it or not, it ended up right. There, right? And that's, right, right. And you're right. And he's just he's out there. You mean? I mean, think about you know if you're in any kind of self development field, a Tony Robbins, right? Like, mm -hmm. 
People mm-hmm. have heard of him, right? And that's, that's what you're saying. And, and and when you think of a company, mm-hmm. um, let's use Globe Life as a, just an example. People sure. have heard of it, right? right? So whether it's a company or a name or whatever it is, it's like they've heard of it. And when you think about that company, mm-hmm. Marco, like tell me if I'm wrong, when you think about like a Grant Cardone, whether you like him or not, you know that he's a successful businessman. Sure. And then odds are he's doing something probably right. Like I and I say that to say, like when you think of a company like a Globe Life, or or let's think of something not an insurance. Like let's think about um, I don't know why I can't think about something not insurance right now. Uh, <laughs> let, let's think about uh, well, let's use Facebook for an example. You know, Facebook's like you know legit mostly. Like you know what I mean. Like everything's good with it. And so when you think about that with your branding. Yeah, like I know you say getting the message out there and talking to people and being aware, but what does that mean? Like when you think of your personal brand, what like is there characteristics that go with that? Like, does the company have to have some kind of backbone as far as like what it stands for or what it pushes out or the person or how does that how does that mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that you should be there should be pride built in your company. I think whatever brand you're putting out there, there needs to be a certain level of excellence associated with that. Because if you're getting into a field, any market that's out there is not considered what we call in the business a blue ocean. Blue ocean meaning there's nothing else. Very rare that you get into a market where it's like that. So you're going to have competitors and you don't want a slight edge because it becomes a competition at that point. The better you know your customer, the better that you have excellence built into your brand and what you stand for, uh, and and you want to divide yourself by a severe margin. If you come out with a new car right now and you're you're 10% better than the rest of them out there, you're going to lose mass amount of sales. They'll buy off recognition. But if you marginalize yourselves severely and what you're doing drastically better than everybody else, you want to use you know, the people are going to buy from you. That's where you'll create your recognition and they'll start trailing you. You only want to use breadcrumbs from a company to learn on what to be like only so far and then start thinking, what do I got to do to separate myself? What are these companies not doing that everyone else needs? If you have a sales course, you need to make sure that you're not, you're not copywriting the same one. What are you doing that's light years better? You know, I've recently got in the last couple of years in the neurologic training, right? How people react to words is more important to me than a pitch. You know, that's why like ditch the pitch. You know, it doesn't have to be just these seven words don't work. What if the person responds poorly? So now I'm more concerned about how people respond. But anyways, to to not go on that too far. um, But yeah, a brand recognition needs to have a foundation behind it. You need to be stand for certain things. And those need to be the attributes of your company through the end of time and not allow them to sway for any circumstance whatsoever. If you are the best, then you invest every extra dollar you have in building that brand and making it that way. You don't say we're the best company out there and you put all your brands on fruit oil loom cotton shirts that are two bucks a piece. You maybe you instead of getting 20 shirts, you only get five, but you get a tribe blend. You get something that's very nice when they see it and they feel it and your and your sales reps put it on, they feel like they work for something that has value. Right. Right. I love that. Well, and it kind of like as as I'm listening to what you're saying and I'm hearing everything that you got going on, it kind of goes down to like your personal brand, right? Like you're putting yourself sure. and your company out there, but like, who are you, right? Like who, like when I think about Nathan Marco, the stuff I said at the beginning of the call is what I think about. Like, you know what I mean? Like, dang, man, like ain't, ain't nobody slowing this man down. He's got a mission in life. He's got things going on. And so like, but like, that's me looking at you, bro. And I think that that's your, that's part of your personal brand. And people get that from people, right? If you walk into somebody's house and you're all kind of moping around, like, you know, somebody just killed your cat or something like, you know, like you're, that's, that's your brand to them. That's what you're bringing. Because here's the deal. When you go out and write a policy with foresters, you are foresters. When you go out and write a policy with, uh, you know, um, American amicable, you're American amicable. When you go out like that, they think you're that person. Like if I'm work, if I'm cruising around with you, Marco, and I got one of your Marco Media shirts on, man. I never used a camera in my life like that. They think I'm a media man. You know what That's I mean? Right. And I'm representing that brand, right? Sure. I gotta, I gotta bring it to the table. So, like, I love what you're talking about because you bring it hard. And so, what? Because in our lifetime, a lot has changed, right? And mm-hmm. I know we got younger people, we got older people, but in our lifetime, sure. a lot has changed, right? Where did, where, what made you? What changed for you? to get you start heading more that direction. And and like, tell me if I'm wrong, like in just one of these numbers, like on one of your posts, like a TikTok or something like that, like what, how many views have you got? Like what's something like a a number that you can- 
you've had a quarter million views on a over on a, a quarter million, but quarter million is a good on a number. view. So you know what I mean. So it's not like you did you haven't had some success. I want to put that number out there so people know that it ain't a little bit. And so, what about so for you? What changed? Um, well, t the times, uh, the buyer's not the same buyer he was five years ago. Social media changed the way we see things. Back in the day, the TV was the TV and the radio was the radio. You listen to it in the background, you'd watch the TV. Now the phone is the TV and the TV is the radio. You just listen to the TV in the background, you actually pay attention to your phone. So now the advertisement needs to be on where my attention is drawn. And my attention is drawn to, to platforms. It's TikTok, it's Facebook. And, you know, I don't care if you don't know them. You need to learn to know them. It's like saying, I don't know how to do good at sales, so I just suck. That doesn't even line up. Then get better at sales. You know, so I understand I'm 40 years old. I just turned 40 on the 9th of March. It's not easy. You know, I didn't grow up with social media. So I, if anyone knows, I understand that it's difficult to learn these platforms. But if you thought, if you go back 10 years ago and I was to say to you, Paul, I can put you on the first 25 channels on TV for free, when back in the day it might have costed $100,000 to get on that channel, you know, only for a few minutes a day. I mean, no one can really afford that. Today, we're giving you platforms for absolutely zero dollars, and we're not even utilizing them. It's like saying, hey, look, here's all these brand new uh, pneumatic tools and air tools you use for a carpenter. You're like, nah, I'm going to use the old hammer and nail trick. Like, how, how many houses are you going to build at that rate? Well, I got a bunch of crew that can help you. Nah, I'm going to do it alone. You know, it's, it's, it's lunacy to think that way. So yeah. I, I understand you're uncomfortable, but the idea is when you're uncomfortable, great things happen. Everything, think back to anything wonderful in your life you've ever accomplished. You were uncomfortable going through it. You was growing, you were growing as a person through those things you were learning. And that's what this is. Just like insurance, just like having a child, you know, you're uncomfortable, you're scared, you don't know what to do, but you can't just say, well, the kid was tough. So I got rid of him. No, you just learn how to be a parent. You know, you put these things down and you'd be better. You'd be a better father because you have to. So treat your business like it's your freaking baby and you get better for that business because it needs you. Your family needs you to do better. Your income needs you to do better. Everything around you is trying to pull money from you. So it's never going to be a price problem. It's always going to be an income problem. And the way to do that is with saturation. And how you create saturation is being your brand and who you are and what you stand for is not only in your employees, it's on every platform you can put it on. You want people to know your brand heavy that when they think of insurance, you and insurance are the same thing. When I think Michael Jordan, I think go, uh, basketball. I don't think Michael Jordan and he smokes cigars, even though he does. He smokes like eight a day, but I don't do that. I tie him to, when I think basketball, I think Michael Jordan. Right, it when goes you, both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So when you think insurance, you want to think Nathan Marco. When you think sales and money, I want you to think Nathan Marco. When you think wealth and, and taking care of my retirement and success, I want you to think Nathan Marco. That's what I want. So even oh, when the right. camera's off, Paul, I am living it. The way I, the way, what I do buy for cars is a representative of who I am, how I dress my shirts, how I speak, how I carry myself on my platform. It's who I want to be seen as. And it's important. Right. Well, and, and you said you said a lot of stuff, right? And dang, like I know I'm gonna miss something here. It's gonna mess me up, and later I'm gonna be irritated about it. But you said uh, you show who, like, and this was a big thing that you just said at the end. And then I want to back up. You sh you have this. You put out who you want to put out, right? The sure. Nathan Marco that I see today is not the Nathan Marco from ten years ago. Never. No. It, you no. know. You know, like I'm looking at that. And I'm going like, hey man, what you're saying is like my dad who said. You know, I'm never going to have one of them phone things. Right. You know, he said it. Next thing right. you know, a couple of years later, he got a dang flip phone. I'm never going to have one of those smart thing phone things. Guess what sure. he did? A couple of years later, he got him a smartphone thing. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. If he would have got the smartphone 10 years ago, he'd have been way further ahead. You know, yeah, he's, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's almost mm -hmm. like me being like, if I don't, if I'm not making actions, in what you're talking about and trying to get better and educate myself. It's not an overnight process. It's no. a, it, it's a, but Hey, these younger people do got it a little bit better, right? Like they already know some stuff, but, uh, but like, I think about that. And if you're making progress toward that, towards that, then every, every day you're getting a little bit further, a little bit faster, right? Like yeah. I can't, you can't not, you can't, you can't say that it doesn't, the Facebook doesn't exist. The Instagram doesn't exist. The, the Twitter, all that stuff. Right. And so, <laughs> You said something and, and really what it, it really meant, what I see different is you decided to change when you saw yeah, change happening. Yeah, yeah, because because obscurity is a big deal. And when you're trying to be anything, uh, even if you're single and you're in the, in the field looking for a lady or a guy, you know, you need to be seen. 
So just common sense clicked for me after I fought it for a couple of years. And uh, my, my wife, we, we started a lawn care company about just shy of a decade ago for my wife. And uh, I, that's when I first started getting the epiphany. I needed to make a change because I've seen companies coming out that were selling leads. And I thought, man, how, how do I get word of mouth going? How, Cause leads can't always, I mean, I can't always maybe have to buy this. I gotta be big enough where I don't have to be because I'm dependent. If I buy from a company that provides leads to me, you right. Cannot. You don't want to be just like incomes. You want to have as much as you can coming in. So, um, and, and knowledge, you know, so I, I, my dad always told me that knowledge was the number one commodity in the world, you know? So it, I just need to learn more about what's going on. If these people are doing and selling me leads, how can I learn about what they're doing? Not so it can be because I want to do it, but in case they fail, I can. And then I started realizing that I wasn't, I started advertising a little bit, realizing I wasn't very good at it, but the companies that I knew were the ones I was seeing on my phone. So I thought, okay, just light bulb. I need to be on my phone. I need to maybe create a business account or something. How hard is that? I don't know. That sounds difficult. Let's try. So I opened one up. I mean, literally it took me five minutes to set one up. Didn't realize it was so easy on Facebook. Right. It's easier than you think it is. Way easier. And then when I have that, now I can talk to people as a business and not as Nathan Marco, which made it way different. Right. So uh, love that because now you become separated as an authority figure. You actually look like a company communicating, which is way a bigger presence. It makes yeah. the customer feel more comfortable, you know, and it doesn't look like some scam artist. So, uh, and then I could see that the more followers I get, the more reviews I could get, the more, the, the bigger that people could look at it and assess if I was somebody to go with. Then uh, I reached out to a, a guy that did marketing and said, hey, look, can you give me some tips? And uh, started getting basic minimal tips. So, you know, you can spend four or 500 bucks a month. Let him do some social media advertising for me. Let me just see how he's working. I knew that I wouldn't hire him forever up front. I just need to learn. Once I seen how what he was doing, how it simple it was, I was kind of let down on myself. Like, I can't believe it was that easy and I was being that lazy. So then I was like, okay, I don't need him, but I don't want to get rid of him. I'm like, well, look, I'll just use you for like paid ads when I do those. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And next thing you know, I started a marketing company just because common sense, once you become, once you're, if your conscientiousness is high, which it should be as an agent, you know, because you're able to see someone's issues and figure out how to solve them. That's our job to be detectives. And if we can do that intelligently enough, you start learning. The human brain looks for problems anyways. It always wants to solve things. So if you just start looking for it long enough, you'll end up seeing the solutions. And so if you can do it with insurance, you can do it with marketing. It's, it's really simple. And then once you get the hang of it, now it's just, how do I get the extra 5% better? How do I get extra 5% better? And, and then it just becomes bigger where, I mean, I got my emblem on my clothes now. I don't leave the house. I got it on my wife's dresses, on her bikinis. Literally, my company name is on everything from blankets to pillows. You can't get in my house without having it on something. You can't you can't probably leave without leaving with something with it on. Yeah, too. That's, so, that's right. Take this with you. Wear it that's everywhere. Right. Yeah, even that. when I post videos, I learned how to put a floating emblem, which is like, oh my God, easy. Like a it, literally to add an emblem to a video or a picture of mine, I could do it in less than three seconds. So it's simple now. So, but it seems, so that way when you it seems so difficult though, right? Like when you first see it, you're like, yeah. dang, how do they do all that? Like, oh, once you yeah. know it's Couple clicks. Yeah, how do I afford them to do this? But if you, that's the joy of YouTube, people. I mean, YouTube itself, Paul, is like when people say, well, I don't know how. Well, Google's your mom now. Ask Google or yeah. you, you know, YouTube how to do it. And there'll be a three minute tutorial. And here's another thing if people say some of those tutorials are 15 minutes, I don't have the time. If you're at the bottom, you can actually control the speed in which the video is played. Good if you go to a times one or a, a times two or whatever, it sounds fast at first, but you can actually pick it all up. And you can start obtaining information really quickly. I have it in my ears listening to YouTube videos while I'm at the gym, in between stuff, if I'm having a cigar. I'm always taking content in and just information. Wow. I love that, man. I was going to ask you a little bit more about education, and you nailed it. You nailed it right on the head. I was like, you, you did it, yeah. dude. And and I want to point out uh, one thing you said I freaking love. Google's your mom now. I love that. Right. I don't use that bad boy all the time. Yeah. Uh, I asked my There's mom no excuse everything. to not know anymore. There's no excuse no. to not know. You ask your mom. 1995. Yeah, you can ask anything. And if, hey, if the answer doesn't come up, ask a better question. You're asking it wrong, right? Uh, right. Yeah, that's the thing on the Google. And uh, you said this, man, you were willing at first to pay for the education. Yes. You know, so you, you yes. invested money in the knowledge. So you didn't know how to do it. But here's the thing that I think sometimes people miss. I pay an accountant, right, to do my taxes and stuff. 
but I'm paying her. I'm learning how to do tax stuff. I know tax loopholes because I'm paying the money, right? So what you're saying is you you invested the money to have someone work for you, pay you. At the same time, you use that as an educational tool. Like it was college to you. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, this is a knowledge is the number one commodity in the world. But if it's only, right now, it's it's more of an, a plethora. In the 90s, if a painter had a good skill set, he 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 had like scarcity. I couldn't find nobody else but him to do a great job. So I had to pay whatever his cost was. Today I can just click a course and I can I could take one in 20 minutes for free on YouTube to anything I want. I could be a painter by the end of the week. Like it's really right. simple. Right. Oh, I love that, man. I love that. Because most things are simple at the end of the day. Most things aren't that complicated, except for whatever that one gig at the nuclear thing. That probably I don't know if I'd do that. That sucked. But- yeah, <laughs> that seems complicated. But other yeah. than that, most of the stuff, the stuff we're working on is not that complicated, you know? Yeah, um, I wasn't scared to fail spending money, by the way. I know those things. I mean, it was money I didn't have to spend at the time. Like, it wasn't allocated for that. But I I wanted my freedom. My freedom meant more to me. And the, and the, the risk of staying the same where I was at was scarier to me than where I could possibly be. It was way scarier to think in 10 years I might still be here. So I, I, to risk 500 a month, look, I just, I want it so bad. I'm willing to take the chance. And if I fail on that, I bet I learned something. There's no way I can't. I'll learn something. It's not like, I don't like the old saying where they say, you know, every failure is a, you know, it's, it's a one way not to do something. I think when a failure happens, not only do you want to learn not how to do something, learn how to recover from the failure, which is sometimes more powerful than the failure. Like when you have no money now and you got to do marketing, you will watch the YouTube and learn how to do it. Because you know your money's gone now. You yeah. will literally resort, be resourceful to you. And if you don't do these steps, if you don't fall back on you at the end of the day, then at that point, you need to probably sit down and figure out why you're sabotaging yourself. Yeah, you said it, man. You said it. You said it. Said enough. Man, I, I appreciate you, man. I uh, There's a piece of this call that I'm just like, wow, that's fire right there. That's <laughs> some good stuff. And I'm, I'm really excited to hear it again, share it with some other people. And uh, before we wrap up, and again, I want to, I just want to say thank you for your time, man. Like, and I know there's, Hey, I know there's more, like, we're just at, we're just scraping the surface of this topic, but is there anything else you want to say? Is there anything else you want to put out there and just kind of to wrap things up or, or closing thoughts? Uh, and in re- just in regards, since we're on the topic of it, I mean, I would just, I would just, if I could tell you the importance, look, so I just want everyone to take to get to, get a takeaway from your advertisements and how you represent yourself online. Just understand that when you post things out there on these platforms, organic platforms, you know, yard sale groups, all these things that you do, it will be there forever. So it's working for you for free. If I said, hey, look, I can hire 30 employees and you don't got to pay them a dollar, but you got to put in five minutes per employee, you wouldn't, you, there's no way you would say no to that. So these posts are running with or without your consent. They're working for you all the time. So, and and just another one thing too, on top of that is just making sure your lifestyle and your personal account mirrors what you want to be resembled as. Because when, when they see that lifestyle, eventually when you're constantly mentioning what you're doing and what's associated with you and what your work is, you'll get DMs starting to creep in. Hey man, what do you do for a living? Hey, you guys hiring? Hey, how much is that real money you guys actually make? Hey, how do you afford to vacation so often? I probably get five a day that I'm not even paying for. They're just rolling right. through from consistency of doing this. So over time. super important. Yeah, super over important. time. You struck something with me I thought of earlier. I knew I was going to forget something. I'm glad it came back because <laughs> I asked you that. What's that? Controversy, man. When somebody doesn't like your stuff, is that a good or a bad thing to you? I love it. I love it. Let yes, me break sir. down why. It sounds opposite. So two things. One, the only way that you actually create haters or even find haters is by being known enough. Everyone that's known enough, think of every celebrity, every everything, they're going to have a bandwagon of haters that come with them, probably 10 or 20% of their followers. But I'll tell you what, what's amazing about that is they are your biggest advertisers. Because if you think of a hater, they're usually surrounded about like me and you. I'm sure we could think of someone that we know personally that is a hater about everything about life. You just can't do anything right. You can't make them happy. They're always miserable. But they're surrounded by people that aren't. So he will say my name 10 times more often than someone that loves me will. He will average, hey, look at this guy. He's an a-hole. Look at the stuff he's buying. Look at this a-hole. And they're going to look at me and they're going to say, man, I'm going to follow that guy. He's 
What's he got going on? They're going to check it out and get on my phone and, and click on something. They're going to learn more about me. Haters will say your name more than your lovers will. You want to make sure you want haters. If you don't have haters, my friends, you're not big enough. You are not big enough. You need to be loud. You want your fire to be so big that everyone else was leaving their campfires and saying, what the heck's going on over there? That dude's got a, a bonfire happening. It's hot. I need to get over there and get warm. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how close I can get, but I'm going to try. And you're going to have people hating, but that's the only way you start making, you know, you have momentum happening if you got people that don't like you. And, and one quick thing is important to that. Don't feed into them. Just keep them going. Just let them have their way on your website. People recognize haters. So good people like me and you see it. We don't even, we don't even care. So you don't have to defend your honor. Them. You don't have to, you don't, you don't have, have to put to. them down. Don't be a no. jerk. Don't put them down. Leave them alone. Everything's yep. okay. But let they'll, them have still, their peace. they'll let them do it. And they, they are leave. going to bring people around. You know, every, they you will. Know, they'll be showing people all about how, all this. Oh, yeah. you're, you're right, dude. And those people, and you're right, they might follow you right away. They might forget completely about the whole concept of it because most people aren't, most people don't think about you as much as you think they do, right? So that's for me. And like, we know that, right? I know most people don't think about it. So if I know that, but guess what? Eventually, that person might see your name again, not remember the context, but they're like, that seems familiar. Maybe I should follow that. Or, you know, hey, how do I know them? And it's just all these seeds are being planted. And like, yeah, let's just be real. I mean, people, people hate and people like. And so. Sure. And, he, and, he, and he, to get hated on, you have to be known. Mm -hmm. You can't hate on someone you don't know. So you have to be known. And another thing, too, real quick, it actually feeds the algorithm. When someone clicks on my post and puts an angry face or they write a rude comment, it actually forces my post back up into the top of the feed again. So I, I will keep writing bad stuff. I will gonna keep being up front for people to see me first. So right. it all works in the algorithm. So it's all beneficial. He thinks he's hurt me, but all he's doing is helping me. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because I've, uh, it's kind of interesting when you think about it. They're just driving traffic, man. Driving traffic yeah. is really the name of the game. And honestly, the people that want to do business with you and like what you got to show, they're going to do business with you. People that don't aren't, you know what I mean? This one person's not going to dictate everything about your world. Right. So, but it, it's, well, you, cool. you should feel, you should feel, uh, it should be like a blessing when someone hates on you, you should be like flattering because you've done something. Cause look, that guy didn't write on nobody's post that day. You're what you've done is so great and so amazing that he had to take the time out of his day to click on that and write a big thing out for you. I mean, that's that compelling. That means you're doing something that big and important and that loud to be seen. That's amazing. Heard some emotions. That's for sure. <laughs> so cool man uh i'm glad we came back to that that wasn't the only thing i missed i know there's other stuff so sure. uh, i apologize to everyone else that i got i got so excited i could just kept asking other questions but um appreciate you man thank you nathan marco keep being the example you are man it means a lot and uh thanks everybody for tuning in we'll catch you soon bye thanks guys thanks paul